Hey, welcome back, friends. This is Joe Samo from San Diego, California. Let's do some probability today. I have a lot of students who have a tough time with probability. Uh, here's the whole sheet of what we're gonna do tonight. Uh, you could pause this and try these all right now or do them one by one, all right? So let's get to it. Let's do the first one. How many different words, they don't have to be real words, can you spell with the letters E-L-V-I-S? And you could do this where the letters cannot repeat and then do it where the letters can repeat. So it's, uh, you could do it both ways. All right, uh, I'll give you a second to try this on your own. Uh, you should come up with two answers and then we'll do it together. All right, I hope you tried it on your own. Let's try it where you use the letters E-L-V-I-S, but they can't repeat. So the way to calculate how many ways this can work is you first look at the first letter. We have five different options for that first letter, right? It could be E-L-V-I-S. Now, whatever letter we use, then the second letter we have four options, right? Because we use one of them. Then the third letter we have three options. The fourth letter we have two options. And then after all that, there's only one option left, you know, whatever of the five is left. So we have five options, then four, then three, then two, then one. Uh, the way to calculate the, all the different possibilities is to multiply all those numbers, five times four times three times two times one. Uh, I kind of like, when I multiply this out, I just kind of group them to, that's 20, uh, three times two, that's six. Uh, da, 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 da. So the answer there is 20 times uh, six is 120. Uh, perfect, okay? So there's 120 different possibilities for how to, all the letters there. Then, uh, let's say if repeating is okay, meaning each, you know you can use the same letter over and over and over again, uh, like for example, E, 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 E. Uh, there, there's five possibilities for the first letter, five possibilities for the second letter, five possibilities for the third, the fourth, and the fifth, right? Because you could use the same letters over and over. So here, what you do is you multiply all of that. You just multiply five times five times five times five times five. That is five to the fifth power. And that's the answer for that. So if you cannot repeat the letters, then there's 120 possibilities. If you can repeat the letters, there is five uh, to the fifth power uh, possibilities. Okay. Now, uh, let's try this one. A coin is tossed three times. What are the odds it'll be three heads? Uh, meaning like three heads in a row. Uh, I'll try this one on your own for a second and we'll do it together. All right, now let's do it together. Uh, so every time a coin is tossed, we have two possibilities, right? A head and a tail. And uh, what we want to know is we want to calculate three heads in a row. So the odds of a heads coming up first is one half. Then the odds of a heads coming up second is one half. Then the odds of a head coming up third is one half. And to calculate, if we want all three heads, it is uh, one half times one half times one half uh, for an answer of one eighth. Uh, all right, so the odds of all three heads is one eighth. Uh, by the way, all tails is the same kind of concept. It's one half times one half times one half. So that's one eighth also. If the question asked uh, something like, what are the odds that you'll get at least one head and one tail? Uh, if you know that one eighth is all heads and one eighth is all tails, um, the odds are it's either gonna be all heads, all tails, or some sort of mix, right? So the all heads plus all tails plus some sort of mix has to equal one. Um, 100%. So you, what you could do here is you could then take one uh, minus the all heads plus all tails. So one minus one eighth plus one eighth. That's one minus one fourth. That's three fourths. So there's a three fourth chance that it'll be something other than all heads or all tails. All right, let's keep the party going, guys. Uh, let's do this one. There are 12 doors, three of which have a hidden stash of $10,000 cash. Samo, that's me, by the way, gets to open two doors. What are the odds of the following? Samo doesn't get any cash. No good. Samo gets at least one door with cash. Or Samo gets exactly $20,000, meaning exactly one door with cash. All right, give these a shot by pressing the pause button, and then we'll do it together. All right, let's try it together. So we have 12 doors, right? The first thing we'll calculate is what are the odds that he gets nothing? 
Uh, that's not very fun. Uh, so what happens here is both of them have to have no cash, right? So if three doors have the cash of the 12, then nine doors do not have the cash, right? So uh, what we're gonna have to calculate here is the, the odds of the first one having no cash is nine out of 12. Then the second one, what happens is we take that door out uh, because we know it has no cash. So there's gonna be 11 doors left. And if we struck out the first time, then there's only eight doors left that have no cash, eight out of 11. So the odds of both doors striking out, uh, the first one would be nine twelfths, then the next one is eight elevenths because there's 11 doors left and eight of them have no cash. So the odds of both of them having no cash, we would just multiply nine twelfths times eight elevenths. Um, and let's see, let's do that really quick. Uh, da, da, da. We could simplify that first one to three fourths, and then four goes into eight twice. So we can simplify that. So six eleven is yeah, six eleven is the answer there. Uh, so there's a six and eleven chance that both doors have no cash. Now, really quick, while we're here, there's a hundred percent chance that either both doors don't have any cash, or one or two of them have cash, right? I mean, there's a 100% chance. Either we're gonna strike out or there's gonna be at least one door that has cash. So no cash plus at least one door having cash has to equal 100%. Um, so another way of doing that then would be uh, if we wanna calculate what are the odds that we get at least one door, uh, we could just take uh, one or we'll just go ahead and put the, the common denominator is gonna be 11 over 11, right? Uh, so we would take 11 over 11 and subtract it by 60 11s, um, which was the odds of no doors, and that equals 5 11. So 5 11 is the answer to what are the odds that at least one door has cash in it. Now the toughest one here is this one. It says Samo gets exactly one door, okay? Meaning um, one door does have cash, one door doesn't have cash. All right, now let's calculate that guy. Here we go, let's do it. Uh, the way I would do this is we calculated what were the odds of no doors having cash. Uh, and the way you could think about this is no doors having cash plus exactly one door having cash plus exactly uh, both doors having cash. Those three things have to equal 100%, right? Because either you're gonna get zero doors, one door, or two doors to have cash, right? So all three of those things have to equal 100%. We already did the calculation of no doors and we came up with 6 elevenths. Now let's do that calculation of exactly two doors. Uh, that would be cool because then that would win both doors, right? The odds of the first door having cash is only three out of 12. Uh, and then if the, we hit that, then the odds of hitting the second door, uh, now there's only two doors that have cash out of 11. So we would multiply three twelfths times two elevenths, okay? Uh, and then that simple, the first one simplifies into one fourth, and then two goes into four t twice. So then we would just get one over 22. So one over 22 is the odds that both doors have cash. So then we put one over 22 over there. Um, let's put these in the common denominator of 22. So this is 12 over 22, and that was one over 22. Um, now all three of those have to equal 100%. So what we could do here is we could subtract the 22 uh, over 22, which is one. Let's subtract it first by no doors. Um, then we come up with 10 over 22. Uh, then, uh, so 10 over 22 is the odds that it's gonna be, you know, at least one of them. Uh, and then we subtract out of that the, the possibility of both doors, which we calculated as, one over 22, uh, so we subtract then 10 over 22 minus one over 22, and that equals nine over 22. So nine over 22 is the odds that exactly one door has cash in it. Let's keep the party going, folks. This is a great one. A box contains four red marbles and eight yellow marbles. Samo will randomly select three marbles. What are the odds that all three marbles are red? Hit the pause button and try this one on your own and then we'll do it together. I hope you tried it on your own. Now let's do it together. So we have 12 marbles total, right? 
And what we wanna do is we wanna draw three red ones. The way to do this is think about the first marble. There are four red marbles out of 12 total. So it makes sense that the odds of the first one being a red marble is four out of 12. Now, it gets tricky after that in the sense that if we do get a red marble, then we could select the second time, and we want that one to be a red marble. And there are only three red marbles left now because we took one out, and there are 11 marbles total remaining. So the odds of the second one being a red marble will then be three out of 11. Then the third selection we now only have two red marbles left out of 10 possible marbles because we took two out. Uh, so we went from four to two on the red marbles and we went from 12 to 10 on the total marbles. So then the odds of that third one being a red marble is two out of 10. What we want is we want the first and the second and the third to hit. Uh, by hit, I mean get the red marble. Uh, what we do with these three numbers then is we multiply them. Yeah, four goes into 12 three times, and then there's a three and three, those cancel out. Then the two and 10 cancel out to one over five. And then we only have one times one times one, which is one, and then we have an 11 and five uh, and a one on the bottom, so that's, that's 55. And that's the answer, it's that simple. It's one out of 55. So the odds of all of those uh, connecting are one out of 55. All right, folks, give this one a shot. Hit the pause button if you want to try this, and then we'll do it together. All right, I hope you tried it on your own. So basically, we have two cars, and we have a, a positive and negative on each car and we have to guess which one is positive, which one is negative. Uh, we better do it correctly, right? Uh, and we better do it correctly on both cars. So each car, there's a positive and a negative. <laughs> so uh, either we're gonna get it correct or we're gonna get it wrong. If we get the positive correct, um, then the negative will automatically be correct. If we get the positive incorrect, then, then you know obviously the negative will automatically be incorrect. So on the first car, you have a half chance of getting it correct and you have a half chance of getting it incorrect and the same goes with the second car you have a half chance of getting it correct and you have a half chance of getting it incorrect and when it comes down to the math we have a half chance on the first car and we have a half chance on the second car and all we got to do is multiply that uh, because we have to get them both correctly so we just multiply one half by one half and that is one fourth uh, and that's the answer. It's one fourth. There's a one fourth chance of getting both cars correct. Um, all right, let's move on to the next one. All right, give this one a go on your own by hitting the pause button and then we'll do it together. All right, so what we have here is a uh, recessive gene has a one fourth chance of appearing. A gardener plants three trees. What are the odds that exactly one or two of them carry the recessive gene? So um, basically one or two out of three carry the recessive gene means we don't, either there's gonna be zero that carry the recessive gene uh, or one or two or all three carry the recessive gene. Uh, those are the possibilities. Those possibilities must add up to 100%. Um, so the way I did it is I first said, okay, what are the odds that all three of them carry the recessive gene? So each one is one fourth chance. So uh, for the odds of all, in all three of those plants having the recessive gene, we would just have one fourth times one fourth times one fourth, right? So that's one fourth cubed. Uh, so let's do the math there. I multiply four times four, that's 16 times four, that's 64. So there's a one in 64 chance that all three have the recessive genes. All right, now let's do uh, what are the odds that zero of them have the recessive gene or all three have the dominant gene? Okay, so the, if there's a one-fourth chance that uh, each of them have the recessive gene, then there's a three-fourth chance that they don't have the recessive gene, meaning they have the dominant gene. Uh, so let's, so it would be three-fourths times three-fourths times three-fourths. So three-fourths cubed. Uh, and then that would be 27 over 64. So if you think about it, again, Either it's gonna be zero have the recessive gene, all three have the recessive gene, or one or two. 
So what I want to do then is I want to take the 100% and subtract out the odds of all three of them having it and all three of them not having it. So then it would be 60. I, I did 64 or 64 just to keep it as a common denominator. So I go 64 over 64 minus uh, then the odds of the 0 plus the 3, which is 1 over 64 plus 27 over 64. So then we get 64 over 64 minus 28 over 64. Um, and then we do the math. 64 minus 28 is 36. So 36 over 64. That is the odds that we're going to have one or two of them that have the recessive gene. Or put another way, those are the odds that it won't be zero or three. Okay? Um, and then 36 over 64, that can simplify, right? Four goes into uh, 36 nine times, and four goes into 64 16 times. So the answer is 9 16 That's the answer there. All right, great work on that one. Now I want you to try this guy on your own. Do this one on your own. You can do it. You can make it happen. And put the answer in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you want to keep receiving these math videos. And I put some links right here and here uh, for some other videos that can help you uh, keep your algebra and geometry skills sharp.